coming up tonight on YCN News. Last night's storm wreaks havoc on the region, including one fatality. A local national park superintendent gets promoted. And NASCAR screeches into New Hampshire at Loudoun. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN News, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening. It's Monday, July 20th. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Kurt Weedy, and this is YCN News. Tonight, news in from Lebanon Public Works. A water main break has occurred between Timothy Avenue and Maple Street in West Lebanon around 2.20 in the afternoon. Crews are on site and working to make necessary repairs. Approximate time of repair is two to three hours. Contact Lebanon Public Works at 603-448-3112 for more information. Well, from Sunapee West to Claremont, damage from yesterday evening's rain and windstorm is evident everywhere. Trees uprooted from the ground or leafy branches on the street, combined with lightning strikes, resulted in lost electrical power for thousands of homeowners in the region. Power outages continue today throughout the region, especially in Newport, Newberry, New London, Sunapee, and Wilmot. Eversource and New Hampshire Electrical Co-op are updating outage reports as customers of both power utilities were affected by the storm. Some still are. Depending on your electric provider, go online to the websites listed below for updates. And in Claremont, a fatality due to the storm. A 24-year-old Claremont man was killed when a tree fell on his car during the storm around 7.25 p.m. last night. Kyle LeClaire was driving his 1997 Honda sedan west on Chestnut Street, headed into Claremont, police say. While driving in the area of 230 to 260 Chestnut Street, the storm caused a large tree to partially break and fall into the roadway, hitting LeClaire's vehicle as he was driving by. LeClaire was traveling within his own lane, and it is believed he was driving below the posted speed limit. Chestnut Street runs off Broad Street and leads to Unity. Chestnut Street also was known as Second New Hampshire Turnpike. Vermont also felt the damage of Sunday afternoon rain and windstorms, especially in the northwest region. Flood warnings were issued for areas in Washington County and further north near Chittenden County. Barrie did experience flooding as well. Now at least a dozen people from that town outside of the state capital Montpelier went to a shelter for safety. Well, turning to another type of storm, New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan vetoed today House Bill 550 a bill that would have altered how tobacco is taxed, along with the state's business profits tax. The bill, says Hassan in a news release today, relates to the sale or exchange of an interest in a business organization under the business profits tax. Now, talk around the bill brought up an issue regarding exercise company Planet Fitness. The company is planning to go public and seek investors. As such, it sought for a change in the state's tax code. Planet Fitness, including former New Hampshire Governor Craig Benson, who is an investor, made its case before lawmakers this year. A request highlighting, highlighting Planet Fitness's needs centers on a lower tax rate for businesses who remain in New Hampshire and become more profitable. Hassan says she will discuss issues behind the bill at a later date because they relate to the state's business future while keeping the state without a sales or income tax. Well, coming up after the break, 13 people are arrested in Claremont and Newport on drug charges. We'll have all those details for you after the break. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. Thanks for staying with us tonight. I'm Kurt Weedy. Well, the bank account for the so-called food fight in Vermont got a $100,000 boost this weekend. Rocker Neil Young donated that sum to help the state in its GMO labeling lawsuit, an ongoing battle the state is fighting. Genetically modified organisms, also known as GMO, is any sort of organism whose, genet whose genetics excuse me, are altered by engineering, 
often used in food and non-food products. Vermont is striving to become the first state in the nation to prohibit food producers from labeling their products as natural when they in fact contain GMOs and for food labels to state if they contain any GMOs at all. That would begin next July. The court battle could wind up being financially exhausting, so donations such as Neil Young's have gone a long way to fortify Vermont's efforts, according to 7 Days Vermont. Well, turning to another issue, Claremont and Newport police arrested 13 residents on felony drug charges after months of investigation. The arrests were a result of a joint investigation led by the New Hampshire Attorney General's Drug Task Force. Those arrested range in age from 24 to 59 and live locally and in New England. Police seized over $3,000 in cash and a sizable quantity of hard drugs. Check out our Facebook page at YCN News Now for more details on this case. Well, finally, last week we brought you a look at St. Gaudens National Historic Site in Cornish and their release of a call for interest to turn part of the property into a national park for the arts. Rick Kendall, the park superintendent who we spoke with on Friday and has been in the position for the last five years, was promoted over the weekend to supervise a second park. The Marsh Billings Rockefeller National Historic Park in Woodstock, Vermont, will now also be under the supervision of Kendall, who will hold offices in both national parks. The goal of this move is to bring the two parks closer together in terms of sharing resources and opening up more opportunities. The Cornish and Woodstock parks will both retain their original identities. Well, coming up after the break on YCN News, Maureen Strawn and Janine Berger of the New London Historical Society speak with Lynn Solomon of the Kearsarge Chronicle about what the society offers this summer. We'll have that conversation for you after the break. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News, I'm Mike Pizzone. Well, it was a pretty warm way to start the work week, and it looks like that trend will continue over the next several days. Skies will remain mostly clear this evening, with a low of 61 degrees and areas of patchy fog moving in by the early morning hours tomorrow. From there, things will begin bright enough with highs of around 81, but clouds will begin to move in during the afternoon, bringing with them a 50% chance for thunderstorms after noon. Skies will become partly cloudy by sunset with a low of 60 degrees before a bright sunny day Wednesday with a high of 78 during the day and a low of 59 Wednesday evening. Now let's see what's happening in the area with a quick look at our community calendar. The Billings Farm and Museum on Old River Road in Woodstock, Vermont will hold its Time Travel Tuesday in Woodstock program tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Hands-on activities include 19th century farm chores and pastimes. Call the number on the screen to find out more. The Windsor Linux Users Group will meet tomorrow from 5 to 6 p.m. at Winsicle Computers on Main Street in Windsor, Vermont. The meeting is open to anyone interested in the Linux operating system. Visit winsicle.org for more information. A Seniors Game Night will be held tomorrow from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Claremont Senior Center off Maple Avenue in Claremont, New Hampshire. The event is for anyone ages 50 or older, whether they're a member of the Senior Center or not. A variety of games are available and the event is held weather permitting. With NASCAR in New Hampshire this past weekend, I headed down to New England's largest sporting facility to take in the action both on and off the track. And there was certainly plenty to take in as drivers from NASCAR's top tier series prepared for Sunday's 5-hour Energy 301. But for those who weren't interested in watching Saturday's practice, there were a handful of activities to take part in outside the oval, including a zip line, trampolines, and a massive Ferris wheel with stunning views of the racetrack. Fans could even take part in some racing, albeit in go-karts, with their favorite drivers just a stone's throw away across the facility. Those who were interested in practice saw teams struggle to prepare for Sunday's anticipated hot track conditions, with overcast and sometimes drizzling skies Saturday morning teams worked furiously over their cars to try and find the right setups until matters were made slightly worse when rain forced practice to end about 10 minutes early. There were also a fair share of celebrities on hand as musician Brett Michaels was tasked with amping up the crowd before Sunday's main event with a live performance from the front stretch. Michaels talked with the media before his show. 
I got a lot of my uh, good uh, best friends that live up here in the area are going to be here in the family today. Uh, big fan, big fan of NASCAR, always have been. And uh, it's an honor to be here, to be able to be here and play music and uh, enjoy the race. New Hampshire native and comedian Adam Sandler was also on hand to give the command to start engines and spoke about his connections, or lack thereof, with the Speedway. All right, I got to clear something up. I've never been to this track. Never. Never been to this track. I, I, when I said I watched NASCAR growing up with my pop, okay, it was it was from my house. Right. That's right. So I never got it. When I was a kid, this I don't think this track was, I don't think this was, yeah, yeah it's right. like 25 years old or something, it right? It is. Yeah, I would have been, 25 years ago, I would have been 51. <laughs> <laughs> and once the green flag did drop for Sunday's five-hour Energy 301, there was plenty of action leading to a bold victory by Joe Gibbs Racing's Kyle Busch. The win was Busch's third of the season and second straight, prompting a large celebration in victory lane. And on a baseball note, the New Hampshire Fisher Cats took advantage of a bases-loaded walk with two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning Friday night to earn a walk-off 2-1 victory over the Portland Sea Dogs. New Hampshire won again Saturday in a 5-4 game, but dropped the finale of the four-game series last night 2-0. The Fisher Cats will travel to face Harrisburg tonight at 7. That's been your look at local sports. I'm Mike Pizzone. Thanks, Mike. Well, an all-new Capital Connections is up next. This week we'll be joining John O'Connor, who spoke to Ginny Loopy. She's the director for New Hampshire's State Council on the Arts. That's coming up. The YCN News continues in a moment.